Okay, we're getting in the oven. Let's go, guys. It's not so bad. It's not so bad. Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka GeekXX Chic, and we are back with another reaction to Agatha All Along. We're now on episode three, which is called Through Many Miles of Tricks and Trials. So I'm loving how these all rhyme now. That's kind of fun. Like it's gonna probably make some really long poem by the end of all the episodes, I think. But anyhow, last episode, we finally got our witches to the witches road, but it was not through <laughs> without a lot of effort. We see that um, the song went down without a hitch, but things didn't exactly kick off immediately. And it's very interesting because there's still a debate over whether or not the uh, earth witch is actually the right witch or is she a witch at all? But either way, they were able to open the gate. And I still have a theory that potentially the teenager's energy had something to do with it, but I guess we'll find out soon enough. But either way, our girls and our one boy have made it down to the witch's road and Agatha seems to feel like they are off to a good start. So I'm very excited to get into this and I'm hoping we get to learn a little bit more about Agatha as we go down this road. So let's jump in. Just before I do though, you know the drill. If you'd like to be notified of when I drop episodes, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. All right, that out of the way, let's get into the episode right now. That's exactly how I pictured it. Oh, was it? Yes. Suits you. <laughs> it's true. He does have a goth vibe. Helpful interjection, random woman with no obvious magical qualities. Hey, she has so, a name. It's Mrs. She, she, okay, so they managed to pull it off without her. So I'm wondering how they opened it and does it make a problem because it's not a proper coven. The road will test us and our knowledge of the craft. One trial for each skill. What about the bound one? Can... Labor intensive manual act of magic. Huh? Witchcraft. Emphasis on the craft. Huh? Uh, who are you? Exactly. I... Oh, they all aren't allowed to know. Someone's put a sigil on that. Thing. Unless it's for Agatha. Or he could be a pest with a cranky witch stashed under a rock. We can crack him open later. The real value lies at the end of the road. Like, let's keep focused, people. So easily distracted. It's like herding cats. And you want to find out what happened to mommy? And, and you, you just want to go home. Where'd you go? Go? Oh god, where'd you go? Oh my god, where'd you go? Oh my god. Don't touch me. I agree though. Sometimes trees really do be trifling. Oh, Agatha, why'd you bring this poor lady down here? She's been through enough magical trauma, don't you think? I knew you should this. Let go. Where is she? It's not worth it for the bag. Here we go. Yeah. Uh. Oh. <laughs> Agatha, that's how I help. Like, oh, I was just about to jump in there. Rule number one. Do not step off the road. Thank uh. you. Can we all see that or just you? Yay, son! Oh, no, I don't trust it. It's too idyllic. Was that there before? Sure wasn't. That looks painted. I gotta give kudos to that actress. Everything about her, even her physical acting, lets us know who she is without us having to see. <laughs> Maybe this is the end. Don't be such a bummer. Okay, bye! Well, we don't want to surprise anyone. Don't we? <laughs> I'm with Agatha, let's have fun. <laughs> I don't feel like traditional manners actually apply here. Magical realm and all. Oh, I love this house. Never mind, let's stay. Road changes for oh. the coven. Wow. It changed us too. I was about to say. Middle age, second chance at love vibes, and I'm here for it. Is is love the oh god, the door is gone. These don't open. Yeah. Oh my god. Ah, what you found now? Bury me in that kitchen. <laughs> hey, Amen. What is this? A wedding? Please God, not a baby shower. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. Yes, because we already know you think they're delicious. Wine. That's I wouldn't drink anything from here. Wait, wait, wait. We don't know what's gonna happen if we drink that. No, exactly. Sure we do. Something terrible. We're gonna get drunk. 
Did you know she traded her own child for the Book of the Damned? Yeah, that's how Agatha rolls. But that is what people say. They say no one really knows what happened to him. Hmm. Others say he might be a demon. Or an agent of Mephisto. <gasps> Mephisto! I doubt she'd even recognize her own son if he showed up at her doorstep. Ugh. Is that a big anvil drop for us guys? Is it you? Are you her son? I mean, this would be a great revenge arc. That's what I said. Sis said I had enough. Lost my purse. It's right. Enjoy your wine, girl. Enjoy your wine. Don't you judge her. I have had a very hard day. Thank you. you. Purr. Where did that come from? We have 30 minutes? Okay, let's... What do we... Wait. Okay, what was that? We walk alone? Something about my tricks are told? Should we take the girl talk to the sofa? <laughs> she is seasoned with her wine parties, I can tell. <laughs> I noticed Agatha's not touched her wine. Really like your tattoo. Where'd you get it? Nowhere. Okay. Personal question. What happened to me at 13 too? Interesting number. A witch is really just another name for a bad girl. Is that right? That is extremely Oh, the fact that she's still trying to like make sense of all of it is a but I would drink the blood of a virgin if it would smooth out some of these wrinkles. <laughs> oh my Don't say god. that. Oh god. What? Oh, you are so sweet. I don't really think I do either. You're um a, a little swollen. Is it bad? I think she looks fantastic. <laughs> Stop it, egg. Oh my god. God, I have I mean, oh, it's a look. My, face. my formerly perfect face. I know. It just. So I mean, she's trying to I'm hide that she didn't drink. Okay, I'm gonna... <laughs> but honestly, I don't know why you would drink anything in a place like this. Oh, Do God. you hear any ringing or the sound of fairies crying? How would you know how fairy sounds? Your face is back to normal. Oh, my is mine? <laughs> uh, oh, you. When it went so fast. Yay. <laughs> Not yay. <laughs> Agatha, I can't. Loss of motor function. Uh, My heart's racing. That's another one. I mean, that's probably because she's telling you a list of very horrible symptoms. Death. Death. Of course. That's what most poisons do. She didn't drink the poison. You can't <sighs> cheat, Agatha. What? Yes, you can. Tate didn't drink. He's not in the coven. And he's underage. Period. Ah! No! Yeah. <laughs> On the upholstery? Exactly! Wait. You know how expensive this stuff is? Hmm. Do you have to smash all the glasses, Agatha? Drink. I don't know you. Fine. Then I will. Okay. No! Why is she protective of him? Interesting. <laughs> oh, it's so cheap. <laughs> Wanda? Wanda, I'm begging you. Oh no, not Wanda Flash. Let him breathe. Please. I remember this. So the hallucinations seem chill. Uh, okay, of her watching her husband almost die? Uh, I need a corpse that's been decaying for at least 30 million years. Is that something that's readily available? Right? I don't know what the hell you're talking about. A dinosaur? No, I just need a really big cauldron. Will the sink do? I can be a witch. Uh, okay, I'm thinking petroleum. Uh, uh, jelly. Uh, jelly. Try to save Agatha. Uh, uh, yes, I love this plan. <laughs> She's like, no. That was one of her visions, right? This chaos is brilliant. I love it. Maybe don't follow that. Maybe not go. Please don't open that door. Let's not do that. No, no, let's not investigate. Damn Lucy Nations. Oh. Okay. Great. Okay, so the boy is going to be their only hope because he's the only one who didn't drink, so he's going to be the only one with a, a mind that's working. Thank you. Where's the boy? We need the team. Quickly, these women are losing it. 
I wonder what Agatha's gonna see. And will she know enough to see through it? Mom? Are you really here? Did everyone forget that this thing makes you hallucinate? Everyone! It's going to kill me. Don't say that! Damn, that is heavy to grow up with. Wow, okay. We thought you just walked for a few minutes, but... You're nothing. That's why I want to know who that is. Wow. Yeah, these visions are all like their worst possible moments. I can just look at I don't speak Italian. What is that? Well, you did crack the glass. Great, you're underwater now. Seawater. Salt water. Hurry up! Let's go! What happens when it breaks? Obviously, water rushes in. Why are we not making the potion? Wait, next is Frank and No, 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 wait, get out of here. <laughs> Where's the soup plank? She's like, this is my thing, excuse me. Obviously, yes, three drops. Take your time. Oh my god. <laughs> let me, let me, let me. <laughs> it's the lack of patience, I love it. <laughs> With your dominant hand, counterclockwise. To the left. Right. Use, use small words, please. He's Gen, he's Gen Z. Gen A, actually. Okay, here comes hers. I was saying, Agatha's the only one who hasn't had a hallucination. Okay, so this is this the baby? Her son? And again, these are, everyone's had a dark memory. So does she look at her son as a dark memory? Oh, I just realized her pin. That's what she's saying is still there. Wow, great symbolism. Did she really trade her kid or was it something she didn't realize she did? Once our intentions are aligned, it'll glow bright cerulean. Yeah, what are our intentions again? Right? Not I'm like, die. Agatha's a bit sketch. Evergreen? Uh, it's like a blue green. Maybe like a. No, teal. that's definitely green. I don't know. I've never made this potion before. I make retinol serums for Christ's sake. <laughs> She's like, I've been a potion master for a while. We're all gonna die here. I do not wanna die here. This is not where I die. We need to calm down, Bree. I have always hated you. Damn. If this is a bad talk. Right? We're not starting well. You can be that witch again. They can take your power, Jen. But they can't take your knowledge. Bars! Blood. Oh. Who's in how much? We need the blood of the unpoisoned. Hey, team! But you thought you were getting off easy, didn't you? Oh, God! Agatha! Just a little prick, pin prick's all we need! Oh. A pin prick! Hey, that's blue! No. A glass for our friend, Miss Hart? That's gotta be disgusting. But any worse than cheap wine? Oh. What about Miss Hart? Does she not get. The timer's still ticking. This is hard. Oh. Right, yo. The sweetest woman in there. Ah. What do we get in the oven? What's going on? Is that our exit? Okay, that is very I'm not climbing in an oven. Right, first of all, and second of all, what if you're a bigger person? <laughs> okay, we're getting in the oven. Let's go, guys. It's not so bad. It's not so bad. It's really not so bad. <laughs> she was the first one in there. <laughs> and the fact that no one's there to help Mrs. Hart. Y'all self-preserving. <laughs> She's so little. Why is she so heavy? Because <laughs> dead weight is no joke. Shut her. Shut her in. She's <laughs> Oh. Okay. Now we're back in our OG outfits. Look out. Oh, God. This is going to be like a bowling. Alley just pins at the end of an alley. Oh, can we get up? Where's Mrs. Hart? Is she there? I didn't see her come. A little rusty there, Jen. A little okay. traitorous there, Agatha. Stop. <laughs> Everyone is safe. Where's Miss Hart? Sharon's dead. Sharon. Dear witches really got you messed up, huh? Who's Sharon? Who wasn't even supposed to 
to be there. <laughs> She's hanging out. <laughs> Who's Sharon? Oh my God, that is so something I would do. Oh, that was hilarious. Okay guys, well, that was another fun episode. I'm enjoying this show, I really am. Like, I know there's some people who have some opinions, some strong opinions about this show, but I just feel like, like, I love that Marvel is having so much more fun with different types of storytelling. Not everything has to be the stereotypical zero superhero journey. Sometimes you can have an anti-hero, I think is what we'll call Agatha for now, although we know in WandaVision, she was definitely the villain. And I do think in the comics overall, she's not necessarily a good guy, but she isn't necessarily like evil for no reason, if that makes sense. She's a very driven woman, let's put it that way. Agatha is a very driven, very focused person and she doesn't really let things like mm, morals and social norms get in the way of her plans let's put it that way okay but anyhow uh this episode we got into the witch's road we had all of our ladies there and we didn't get to learn too much more about agatha yet which i'm really hoping we do actually i shouldn't say that we got a little bit of a rumor which is possibly true about her son so I've been speculating since last episode, well, actually since the first episode and then going into second episode that this teenager might be related to Agatha somehow. Now we know Agatha's super, super old. So I don't really know like if she had kids or you know how old they would be if she had them. Cause I don't know how witches be. I don't know if you can always be having kids as a witch or if after a certain point they, they can't have kids too. I don't know. I'm probably thinking a little too scientifically about it, but anyways, Point is, uh, thank you for those in the comments who mentioned that the name Nikki Scratch, which was on the um, the stuff that was in that room from episode one, apparently Nikki Scratch is the name of her son, and so at least yeah, I guess in some of the not or some of the comics that's her son. So I'm wondering if potentially this could be her son from another dimension because this is a teenager, and as I said, I just don't see Agatha having a kid like within the last 16, 17 years. I mean, how old is he? Actually, no, he's probably around 18. I think he's around 18, but anyways, still, you know, I just don't think that that's something that Agatha would have been doing recently, especially since she had the dark hold. But now that we had a little information, we discovered thanks to Jen, that there's a rumor that Agatha traded her son for the dark hold. And that doesn't ring true to me. It really, really doesn't. I feel like, we already saw in this episode that Agatha was instinctively protective of this teen, right? Like she doesn't know why at this point, but she seems protective of him. We saw that when um, they asked him to drink the poison, she immediately jumped in front of him and stopped them, which is not in character for Agatha. We know that Agatha is somebody that typically will toss, like she'd throw almost any, she'd throw an old lady in front of a bus to save herself. You know what I'm saying? So for her to just step in front of this teen that she's only known for, you know, 48 hours maybe at this point, there's something there. There's like, I think there's a connection that she's sensing or feeling that even she's not fully conscious of or she doesn't know why yet. But anyway, this is why I just don't think that's what happened. I do think that there was a loss of her son because again, in the flash or in the, in the first episode, when we see her, when she thinks, you know, she's the cop and she's looking into that room, it's very clear on her face. There's regret, there's nostalgia, there's sadness. It's like she's mourning and the way the womb is set up, it's like, you know, if you've ever seen someone who's, who's lost a child, they typically kind of, their rooms often kind of become shrines to that kid for a while, right? Usually the parents don't have it in them to, you know, take the room down for some time because that's part of their mourning process. And so anyways, I just don't think that she'd be grieving a son that she, was e she would easily trade for a book. You know what I'm saying? Like, if that's how unfeeling she was towards her own child, I just don't think she'd be mourning him, even in her delusions. So, and then we saw that she had, that when everyone was having their hallucinations of, you know, and as, as I said, for all of them, it was their worst moment, right? It started with poor, um, poor Mrs. Hart, who flashback to WandaVision. There is uh, the episode of WandaVision where they're over at Mrs. Hart's house, or did they come over? I can't remember. Either way, they're having dinner with the Hart's, and Mr. Hart said something. I think he, he started to break character and Wanda didn't like it. And she started to make him suffocate. And Mrs. Hart was like, you know, stuck in character, but begging Wanda to stop basically suffocating her husband. And so that was just like, that, that was really well done by the way. I'm, I'm surprised I remembered that. But anyways, but yeah, so that flashback was obviously probably the worst moment of that woman's life. Right, so I'm like, as soon as I saw that, it set the precedence that everybody who had a vision 
it was gonna be one of the scariest or darkest moments of their lives. And I'm not sure if we're gonna like touch on all the different, because we got to see everyone's vision. So I'm not sure if we're gonna somehow revisit them all. I feel like we will. But coming back to Agnes, we'll talk about the other witches in a second, but talking back to Agnes, for her, it's the baby crying, it's a cradle. And we see that immediately before she even takes the cover off of the crying sound, tears running down her eyes, right? So again, this does not come across to me as a woman who easily traded her child for power as much as she wants power. And so, and then when she flips it open and there's the dark hold instead of her baby, to me, I feel like it's one of two things may have happened. One is that her baby was stolen somehow, like maybe the baby was taken and that was maybe one of the motivations behind Agnes going for the dark hold, or she went for the dark hold and didn't realize that the penalty or the cost of it was going to be her son, right? Because if you know the way that witchcraft is typically talked about, there's many times, especially with dark spells, it's never a straightforward situation, right? It's never a deal. Like they, they call it a deal with the devil for a reason, right? There's always a little hidden, you know, fine print thing there that's just one extra jab at whoever is foolish enough to sign this, this, this deal. And I have a sneaking suspicion that Agatha did a lot of things thinking she would get the dark hold and that the dark hold probably said there would be some form of exchange, but I don't think in her wildest dreams she thought it would be her child. And then by the time she figured out that that's what happened, it was too late. So if that was something that, that happened, it definitely would, in my opinion, explain kind of why Agatha became so cold and so calculating when it came to getting what she wants and just kind of like lost all empathy as far as like just basic human interaction. Because losing your child, especially with something like that, I could see that being like the definite violent shove into a villain arc, right? So I don't know, but that's just speculation on my part. But I think one of those two things or something along those lines might have happened. And of course, people probably heard the stories, but Agatha, no, of course, she's not going to cooperate with, you know, the truth of that story because it's, it's, it's her, right? Agatha, she is very, very rarely straightforward. And that's one thing to note too, is that people who constantly crack jokes, heavy sarcasm, constantly trying to pick fights, like even how we saw how <laughs> when they got out of the whole situation in the first trial, Agatha poking fun at, at Jen again, like, oh, well, that someone's kind of rusty. Like that type of stuff, all of those are defense mechanisms. They're all ways to keep people from getting close to you. And they're also ways to hide sadness and grief in some ways. So I just feel like Agatha's just a very unhappy woman. And that's probably one of the main things that caused this unhappiness. But anyway, we did get to learn that about Agatha. And I do think that that was really cool to find out. And I think we're going to find out more about this. Like the fact that he was brought up at all her son, the fact that that conversation happened with the teen and the fact that we saw the baby, like, I just don't think we're not going to visit Nikki or something about Nikki soon. So that was pretty much Agatha in this episode. And again, just being a perfect, perfect comic relief throughout the entire thing. I love it so much, guys. I'm sorry. Like, I like having a little bit of levity and comedy in my TV shows sometimes. Not just, you know, especially with the Marvel show. A lot of times we only get the odd joke cracked here and there. But I just love that Ag Agatha is just so camp that it really works. And it does. It works for her character. Like, it makes her witchy, but in a fun way. Like, not in a too much of a over-the-top campy way, if that makes sense. Like, this is camp. But it's not like in the over the top, like you're rolling your eyes kind of way. But anyway, so that was Agatha. And then we had, well, <laughs> there's not much to say about poor Mrs. Hart. Like she clearly is not a witch. We found out there's a verification this episode. She wasn't a witch. Agatha just did not want to call Rio. And this poor woman got pulled into a situation she didn't belong in. And it looks like, unfortunately, we lost her. I don't know if that's really the case. We'll find out soon enough. I feel like it might be the case, though, because I feel like Rio is going to have to join the, the group. Like, she was the one who was meant to go on this walk. I don't know how, but I just feel like she's going to end up being there. We they, they said it. They can't actually complete the road without an Earth Witch. And I think the first time Agatha went through, I'm pretty sure she had an Earth Witch. So we'll have to see. But anyways... So that was her, but yeah, I mean, she is gone. <laughs> Bye, Mrs. Hart, you were adorable. I love that actress, as I've said multiple times. She did such a good job, everything. As I said, even her physical acting of when they just showed the feet, we knew immediately who Mrs. Hart was because she was so good at being kind of ditzy and bouncy. And I love that. She did a fantastic job. But yes, that was her. Moving on to Jen. So we see with Jen's trial, this was definitely her trial. This is why we needed a potions witch, right? 
as I said, as soon as they walked in, the fact that I was like, I'm not drinking nothing. I'm sorry. If I'm in a magical world, there's no way I'm eating or drinking anything. I don't care if I'm on the brink of death. I'm not eating or drinking anything. You can't not think that they're going to be something in everything they put in there, right? Especially if it was magically conjured. But anyways, poor, you know, poor Sharon didn't know. Of course, she's going to go and have her drink. But anyways, it was part of the trial. They had to drink it regardless. They weren't going to be able to leave that room. We saw that that house lost all the doors and all the windows sealed up the second they walked in. So if Agatha hadn't drank the wine, they would still be stuck there. But anyways, we see that it's a po it was a poison and this was Jen's turn to shine because she is the potions master. And it really took her knowledge of how to make potions, even though she didn't have the magic to actually concoct the potion on her own. And so I really like the messaging there of like, you know, yeah, she doesn't necessarily have the easy route, but you know, Agatha's speech to her, I think was great. It was so typically Agatha too, like starting with, I've always hated you. Why? <laughs> I'd love to know why. But anyways, but she's like, but honestly, she's like, and I love that she said this, the reason I left you alone is because what you do is important. And I really like that idea in that it shows that Agatha, as I said, she's not, this is why I don't call her a real villain because she's not evil without purpose, right? So like she said, she said like, she didn't like this woman. She doesn't really have a personal attachment to Jen, but she respects the fact that she's powerful and she knows what she's doing. So she's like, I'm gonna leave her alone, most likely because she's thinking I can use you at some point. But either way, that's when you know it's, that's a real gangster who recognizes like, okay, I might need you. I'm not gonna just wipe you out because I'm being petty. That's true evil when you're just wiping people out for the sake of it. But anyways, so yeah, she kind of let her know that, you know, it's not about her power, it's about her knowledge, right? She's like, even if you don't have your magic, you studied potions for probably centuries, that's still there. That doesn't get wiped out without your magic. So thankfully she was able to make it all work in that makeshift environment. And that potion ended up saving everyone's life literally at the nick of time, but it worked. And I love that Agatha's speech is kind of what snapped her out of her panic. Um, then we saw with, um, oh goodness, I can't remember the name of the uh, the one with the site, with the divination witch. I can't think of her name right now. But anyway, she had a flashback. She followed a woman, looks like from, oh gosh, I'd say maybe 16th, 15th, 16th century Italy. Someone talked to her in Italian, told her to follow them. And when she showed up, it looked like literally the angel of death was there. And the woman that she was following had also, you know, it was like her dead body there or something like that. So no idea what that was. Um, my guess is that maybe if she is quite, cause remember we, Agatha said she's at least three, 400 years old. I'm thinking that her powers probably back in the past got her in trouble. Like she probably foresaw, well, maybe it's the plague. Do you think? Is that around when the black plague was? Cause she said everyone was dead, right? She said in Italian, everybody's dead, everyone's dead. So I'm wondering if maybe she foresaw like a plague or something huge coming that wiped out a bunch of people and she tried to warn people and they just thought she was crazy. And then when it happened, they like thought it was her fault, right? In typical, you know, witch, witch burning fashion. I don't know, something like that. But either way, it was pretty dark and it definitely had her shaken. But I'm thinking that that's probably why her power kind of freaks her out because if it's always like dark stuff that she sees, that's obviously no fun. And it also doesn't make you a very fun person to be around. So anyways, that was hers. And I think we're gonna find out more of what it was like for her maybe way back, way, way, way back in her life. So I'm looking forward to that. It'd be kind of cool, get a little bit of Italian in there, you know, get them subs going. But that was her. And then we saw with um, our poor girl, oh gosh, uh, what is her name? Um, the Blood Witch she saw her mom, which I had a feeling it's gonna be her mom, right? Because that's gonna be one of her darkest memories is either, I'm not sure she saw when her mom, the last time she saw her mom or something like that. But we see that her vision of her mom is, that, you know, she's always, well, I guess that moment, I guess when her grandmother died and her mom said that she actually could feel the moment it happened. And I'm assuming that's because of their witch connection. And then she was saying that we heard that she got a tattoo. Her mom made her get a tattoo at 13 that's supposed to ward off curses because her mother believed that her whole family line was cursed. That's a very dark thing to carry around with you your whole life is having someone tell you that you're destined to have a terrible life because of your bloodline. And then we see that the mom just kind of said that, okay, if, if, my grand, if my mother's gone, then that means I'm next. And that's horrible for a kid to hear. And we see that she started drinking and, you know, we saw that um, the blood witch, gonna, you know, was trying to stop her. So all of that was just very dark. And then her mom screaming, like, I can't protect you. Like 
just you starting we're starting to understand a bit more of why she has this love-hate relationship with witchcraft right because on the one hand obviously there's the all the power that could come along with it but it drove her mom mad from the looks of things or darn near mad and there's this darkness that she had to grow up with with this looming kind of hammer slowly lowering that her mom was convinced was going to fall and like curse their family so I'm guessing that in that case, maybe her mom went to the witch's road because she was hoping she'd find the power to break the curse, if the curse is real. So we'll have to see, like maybe she did come down there and you know didn't make it out, or maybe she's still down here, who knows? But that's what I'm thinking is going on with her. And that was pretty much it, right? Those are all of our, those are all of our witches. Yeah. So yeah, we're learning little bits about these, these ladies, which I think is a lot of fun. And I was hoping that we would get a chance to do that. We still don't know very much about the teen outside of the fact that he seems to be, he seems to be team Agatha at the moment. You know, we saw when Jen was trying to warn him about Agatha, he was like, nah, I just think you guys have an opinion of her. I'm not sure that that's true. But we're still not sure whether or not this is an act or if he is genuinely just this kid who ended up finding Agatha. But I just don't think, maybe he is innocent, but I do think if he's innocent, he was pushed to Agatha because that's just too much of a coincidence. But if it's not, then like I said, he's just a really good actor, which considering if that story is true that her son was traded for the Darkhold, it is possible that Nick has come back for revenge or to figure out what happened or to see what his mother is really like because we don't know how old Nick was when he was taken or whatever, swapped out, whatever happened. So if he was just a baby, that means that wherever he ended up, he would have had a ton of potential false information fed to him about Agatha, which could have made him turn in turn hate her. Or maybe he's just always been curious about her. I don't know, but there's a lot of, there's still a lot of potential with this character, I guess is my point. And we also found out that a sigil was put on him, who he is. Like obviously they can see him, but they can't know anything about him, where his background is or his name. So I just feel like, again, like the, as the witch has said, someone's trying to keep him secret from us. And that must mean he is someone that we would care enough about. You know what I mean? Like if it was just a nobody, then there's no point. So who put the sigil on? Did he put it on himself? Is that possible? These are questions that hopefully we'll get answers to. But yes, Agatha's definitely intrigued, even though she acted like she wasn't. So yeah, there's still lots of mysteries to unfold in this. And I am looking forward to it. Trial one was fun. I enjoyed it a lot. I don't know how many we got, but I'm buckled in for all of it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please show some love and I will see you in the next one.